Hey guys, I'm Dwayne Soap here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk about iOS 15 Developer Beta 1. It's been exactly one week already since Apple released iOS 15 Developer Beta 1. And in this video, I wanted to share with you guys a handful of things, right? My experience so far with the software, some bugs, some expected features, some improvements, and things that I've experienced so far with the software. Now, I also want to talk about features that will most likely be enabled in future betas hopefully and hopefully additional features that are yet to come to the software and wish list because there's a lot to look forward to keep in mind this is only beta one apple is just getting started with ios 15 there's a lot of shortcomings but there's a lot of amazing features in ios 15 so we're also going to talk about in this video expected release dates for the public beta i know a lot of you guys are expecting that one and the second beta for developers so expected release dates expected features wish list and of course my experience with the software overall now for those of you not running ios 15 today apple released ios 14.7 developer beta 3 that is available over the air right now if you want to download that i will continue to test that and if there's anything new i'll be sure to bring a video over to you guys on 14.7 beta 3 but for now let's take a look at ios 15 developer beta 1 and the first thing i want to talk about is facetime because facetime received one of its biggest updates in forever with ios 15 i feel like facetime was the biggest application update in all of ios 15 we received the new share play feature which is yet to be enabled that's something that we're looking forward to apple now gives you the ability in facetime to make a group facetime call and watch movies and tv shows at the same time with share play and that's yet to be enabled also screen sharing is available for facetime that's not working properly either in beta one that is to be expected this is as i mentioned only beta one and apple will only continue to improve the user experience now some users are reporting that facetime is completely broken for them i've noticed this on the iphone 12 pro on the 12 pro max it seems to be working just fine on my other device that I'm testing, the iPhone 12, it seems to be working just fine as well. It seems in my end, only iPhone 12 Pro specifically, where some devices are not connecting properly with FaceTime, it freezes, it just doesn't work, and that's to be expected. Now, Links is one of the new features with FaceTime as well, where you can create a group FaceTime call, and some users have this feature working. For me, it isn't working properly. Some Android devices have trouble connecting with the group FaceTime call, but again, it is beta one, it is a feature that Apple is still rolling out and links is available for some users is working for some is not so Apple of course will continue to improve upon that there's just so many updates to FaceTime this year I'm really happy to see that Apple really really focused on FaceTime this year now one of the biggest features this year as well is focus now focus allows you to set different modes for different notifications for different times of the day depending on the time the location so much more uh, now I've noticed that do not disturb on beta 1 isn't working as intended it is working sometimes but it just doesn't work all the time and it sometimes fails to work properly with specific contacts and applications uh, and also the focus feature itself when you go to create a focus it doesn't seem to be working for me when i create a personal focus mode but again apple will continue to improve upon the software focus is one of the biggest features coming with ios 15 i think it's an incredible idea a lot of users will get used to this so you can create a new work mode or sleep mode and things like that the notifications for ios 15 by the way are working very very well for me on the iphone 12 and 12 pro max some users are reporting that notifications continue to freeze when they come in i really haven't experienced that with ios 15 i've only had i want to say one crash since i installed beta 1 which is incredible to see for the first beta but yeah keep in mind guys you don't want to install ios 15 on a primary device that's why you want a test device and uh, apple will continue obviously to improve and fix a lot of the bugs as well now i also want to take my attention over to battery as well because battery obviously is very very important and and being beta 1, I have to say, I can't complain about the battery on iOS 15. It isn't like the best, but it isn't the worst. I get through my entire day. And again, I can't focus enough that this is beta 1. So that's definitely a good sign in regards to battery performance. I would like to hear from you. How's your battery? If you're installed iOS 15 and developer beta 1, how is that for you working 
on the first beta. Now, I also want to talk about Apple Music because I love music. I've been listening to music on iOS 15 since it launched earlier last week. And I do have to say that the Adobe Atmos feature that Apple enabled is incredible with Apple Music. If you haven't tried it out, I highly recommend you do so. It is available. It is live in Apple Music. Spatial audio and Adobe Atmos is incredible. For Apple Music, the listening experience is just second to none. It's just so great that Apple Music added these features and Apple added these features to Apple Music. Another thing I do want to talk about is the overall performance. Now, as I mentioned, I haven't encountered many crashes. Battery is okay, but there's still a lot of improvements to be made. Sometimes the camera would freeze. The lock screen will freeze on me. Some of the widgets are not working properly. So hopefully Apple will continue to iron these out. Keep in mind, we still have a ton to go. We have at least four months to go before this software is available to the public, which means there's a lot of improvements to come and hopefully a lot of changes to come as well. As I mentioned, a lot of the FaceTime features that are not enabled, like screen share and share play, will most likely be coming with future betas here shortly. And hopefully, we'll continue to see UI changes and improvements as well. Just because we did not see some features at launch, which I was really upset about, it doesn't mean that we won't see them in the near future. For example, I'm hoping for Apple to enable interactive widgets. This is me hoping for Apple to do this. There's no inside information. I don't have any inside information on this. But widgets this year, I feel like it was uh, underwhelming, right? There's just a handful of new widgets available. So if we take a look here, we have a new sleep widget, a game center, an email, an app store, a find my widget, which is great to see additional widgets, different variants of the clock and calendar widget. But we didn't get interactive widgets, and I was bummed about that. So hopefully with future betas, Apple will enable some sort of interactive widgets for iOS 15. Let me know if that's something you would like to see, interactive widgets. Now, one of the biggest rumors before the official launch of beta 1 for iOS 15 was improvements to control center. Now, I don't think that Apple will do a redesigned control center at this point I think that's something they would have done in beta 1 so users can sort of get used to it but I do see improvements happening to control center and I hope I'm wrong hopefully Apple will change it entirely and give us a Mac OS style control center remember the rumors about that um, I don't see that happening but again I hope I'm wrong uh, because control center in my opinion is lacking a few things for example you can't really invoke control center from the top left it always has to be from the top right and if you're left-handed you may want to do that from the left just minor tweaking and changes to control center i think would be great at least to see some sort of changes yeah we've seen some new icons rearranged here for the screen mirroring and the new focus options which are available here there's some improvements but not what we thought so hopefully in the near future we'll see improvements to control center now another place that needs a lot of improvement is the lock screen for the love of god i hope apple will change the lock screen with ios 15 and developer beta 2 in in the near future because there's just really nothing happening in the lock screen only new notifications that's it so hopefully we'll see an improved lock screen with ios 15 and future betas for the software. I just really want to see some sort of, I don't know, customization options for the shortcuts down here. Maybe uh, the ability to add some weather to the lock screen. Just make the OS feel alive. I don't know, do something. It just feels plain. So hopefully Apple will improve the lock screen in the near future with future betas. Fingers crossed for that one. It really needs a lot of improvements. Now, next I want to talk about iMessage because messages didn't get as big as an update as Apple seemed to be doing with iOS 15. As you may remember, a lot of promotional stuff with iOS 15 before WWDC was all about messages. And we did get some improvements in messages, but not what I thought we would get because Apple just teased the messages throughout WWDC. We did get some new UI changes and improvements to the software, improvements to Memoji, but I think Apple will continue to improve upon messages and this will be something that we'll continue to see throughout the beta release cycle. I think Apple, as I mentioned before, sees iMessage or messages as a social media, so we could see additional features, maybe a delete messages after sending, remember that? That's something I would like to see where you can delete the message even after it's sent. That's something that other platforms do. And I think Apple should be able to add this to the messages application. Just give it a, a new look as well. I think uh, the ability to change the background could be cool. I mean, uh, the black background is fine for me, but some users may want to change a group background for something uh, more personalized. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, also the ability to delete sent messages will be 
great. Uh, there's just a lot that can be done here. Apple could also add a second level of interaction here, maybe the ability to follow certain creators if you want or artists and things like that. That'd be cool. Interaction with music integration and all that good stuff. That would be cool. And hopefully messages will continue to evolve. And I think this is one of those that's going to continue to evolve throughout the beta cycle and there's going to be a lot happening here in the near future it just can't be that apple teased us throughout all wwdc and not give us something bigger for messages in the near future but we'll have to wait and see now bugs in terms of bugs i can't say that i've encountered too many bugs as i mentioned before the freezing of the camera the lock screen uh, maybe one crash so far but for ios 15 beta 1 that's really nothing now the next thing i want to talk about is expected release dates for the next beta. So if history is any indication and we go by what happened last year, we should see the next beta for iOS 15, iOS 15 developer beta 2 on the week of the 21st. So a week from today, anytime after the 21st, we could see the next beta for iOS 15 for developers. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That would be for developers. Now, how about public beta testers? Well, again, if history is any indication, the public beta for iOS 15 should be coming on the week of the 5th for July. So July the 5th on up, we can expect the public beta to be available for public beta testers. So all that information is based on previous software releases in the past couple of years. And uh, hopefully if Apple continues on the same trend, those are the days that we can expect the beta two for developers, again, the week of the 21st and the week of the 5th for July is when we can expect the public beta to be rolling out to public beta testers. We'll continue uh, to keep you posted on that. Of course, I continue to dig around the software. There's just a lot that I wanna talk about, a lot of the new features and changes, but I do wanna give Apple some time as well to improve and change some things because keep in mind, if I share with you guys over 100 new features and changes, a lot of this stuff could change before the official release. So that's why I don't really go deep into diving into the features and changes when it first launches. I do give you guys a quick overall view, but keep in mind, a lot of this stuff could change and most likely will change before the official release. So if you see all that now, by the time you get the software as a public release, it may not even be the right information. I don't know if you follow me, but yeah, stay tuned. I will continue to share some of the changes and features within the software. But once we get closer to the official final release, that's when we'll see a lot of the stuff that's going to stay the same before the official launch. And there you guys have it, just overall my experience, expected release dates for the next beta, public beta, features yet to come, wish list features and features that are not enabled that hopefully will be coming. There's just so much more to look forward to with iOS 15. Let me know if you're excited about the next beta. What are you looking forward to if you do have a wish list feature? Let me know in those comments down below, guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video and have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.